Well, hello there. Are you a data science, software engineering, or UX student looking to get your hands dirty on a real life end to end project? Or maybe you're a career changer looking to up your skill set and get some experience on your resume while guided by mentors that are currently working in industry. Or you just love doing projects because projects are fun and they're also the best way to learn. Well, if you answered yes to any of those questions, then you should keep watching this video. In this video, we're going to explain what Chronic Coder Academy is, introduce you to each of our product managers and mentors, and give a quick rundown on each of the projects that our very motivated and talented fellows are working on. Let's let the Chronic Coder himself explain Chronic Coder Academy. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Chris. I'm the creator of the Chronic Coder YouTube channel and its many, many great projects. The Chronic Coder Academy is something we built to help accelerate the growth uh, and learning of the Chronic Coder community through application. And the reason we focus so much on applications is because uh, I remember being a place myself, but they now refer to as tutorial hell, where you're going and sitting down and just doing a bunch of tutorials, nicely templated, nicely made by different people. And you're just copying and pasting what they have and maybe understanding a little bit, but never really retaining that information or never really feeling like, oh, at least I never really felt like I knew how the places fit with each other. Um, so yeah, that's the exact same kind of spirit we want to bring to the CCA. We want to learn through application. And what we do is we bring together diverse teams of people uh, with their diverse skill sets, with skill sets ranging from machine learning, backend engineering, to front-end development, to UX design. And we put them all together and they build and ship a product within 10 weeks. So what we're really trying to do is uh, put them in a place where they can grow and you know keep them accountable to keep building what they want to do and ship that product such that people can use it at the end of the day. Benefits of the Chronic Coder Academy, if you choose to apply for it, include well, obviously, first, you're building a product that you're building as a team. You're working together to create something that people can use at the end. The second thing is you're learning about these real world problems and you're learning how to solve them with the skills that you have. The third is uh, being able to explore new ideas, new roles, uh, you know, treating it kind of like a mini startup that is, you know, part time, um, considering that you have to do a lot of things in this three man team, right? Other than that, you know, you also get a bunch of networking opportunities to talk to other fellows in your cohort or even alumni that has come before you, industry people as well. And finally, you end up with something that's a strong portfolio piece that you can show to any employer in the future. We'll make sure that, you know, firstly, if that is shipped, that it can be viewed from anywhere and by anyone. And also that it follows industry standard practices. I want to say too that our main goal isn't to necessarily teach you or lecture at you. It is mainly to keep you accountable and make sure that you know you're following all the steps it needs to get that product um, built and shipped at the end, right? We're we're just here to facilitate your learning, and we believe that through application and through seeing these problems and trying to solve these problems by yourselves, that you will learn uh, more than what we could ever teach you. Hello, everyone. My name is Ignacio Raposo also known as Lugus in the Discord server. At the moment, I am finishing my master's degree in management of complex projects at University College London in the UK. Additionally, I am professionally consulting for some startups as a data scientist and working as a project manager in industrial digital transformation projects for a company back in my home country. My core background is in mechanical engineering. This has led me long ago to find my passion for reliable application in risk consequence tasks for big data, applied graphs, machine learning, and deep learning. Leveraging the advantage of blending physics, statistics, and computer science in order to lead the reliable delivery of a project's intended outcome in the real world is a personal mission for me. During this season, we have three main featured projects. Project I Commander is a machine learning project being developed for ACE Center, a UK charity that specializes in augmentative and alternative communication and assistive technology. The main outcome expected from this project is to deliver an MVP system that is capable of using consumer grade camera to detect voluntary eye movements up, down, left and right, an output a fourth bit signal that can be ported for any of the requirement that the charity sees fit. For this, we're most likely using Docker for containerization, FastAPI for handling the module requests, TensorFlow or Torch depending on the success of the computer vision experiments, and Python for most of backend programming. The second project, also for a center, is a Morse decoder. The main outcome of this project is to be able to input device agnostic Morse code signal and validate which one is a proper voluntary command and adding a little bit of complexity by outputting not only characters, but developing a creative way of including 
a controlled pattern that allows to interact with digital devices in the form of keys, such as, for example, delete, enter, tab, etc., in order to augment the accessibility towards digital devices that these people with reduced mobility might have. Eventually, we aim to pair it with optional modules for fast typing, words, and error correction. For these, we're most likely using Docker for containerization, fast API for handling module requests, and natural language processing. Finally, Python is, will be used for most of the backend programming. Our third project is Project Movino, which is mainly a data science project for an AI-powered platform that automatically screens the whole rental property market and recommends the properties of your liking. The main goal of this project is broken down into main objectives, to analyze their scraped data from all the websites and listings and scrape more relevant data from the web for the areas that are surrounding these properties, and also ensuring the correct veracity and validity of the da data that goes into the engine. Secondly, we need to derive insights and develop metrics relevant to the end users of the platform by exploring the large data pool in order to improve the overall experience. For this, we are using a mixture of Jupyter Notebooks, Streamlit, and several different Python libraries to deal with big data and scraping data from the web. Up to the moment, we're making good progress on the initiatives and we're extremely excited to work with all these motivated and skilled people. We aim to deliver all goals and make a real difference on the real world application for our partners and our end users. So a little bit more about me. Uh, I am currently a research software engineer at a large aerospace company. My team primarily focuses on machine learning and data analytics projects, uh, contracts with external entities like the government or internal research and development projects. So my, my role is kind of a range of different things. It's So I would mainly call it like data uh, full stack data engineering, full stack data science, because we kind of work on everything under the sun in terms of software development for machine learning, data analytics specific projects. Anyway, uh, for the CCA, I serve as the project manager for four innovative projects this season. The first is the YouTube matchmaker, uh, which is a problem Tina and I know very well. Um, when you start a YouTube channel, usually one of the things that you're thinking of to grow faster, you know, to accelerate your growth is collaborations. So you sit down and you want to collaborate with other people, you make videos together and you know, you're introduced to their audience and their audience is introduced to you, right? However, the only easy way to do that that I know uh, is through like Facebook groups or Reddit groups, uh, subreddits. <laughs> it's pretty tough because you kind of have to rely on, you know, other people who are exactly similar to you posting on those same groups or you know you have to filter through a lot of like spam ridden subreddits right and the plan is to use the api together like a bunch of data put it all together and use some unsupervised clustering methods to match them so like based on their tags their subscriber count their views descriptions and more and hopefully suggest to them that you know this is people that you can look to for collaboration these are people who do the same kind of things as you same kind of viewer account uh, or people who are in your same space that you can look up to for something better right so to improve your own content number two is an application for the visually impaired and uh, we've just gone through a round of primary research talking to some experts and they've mentioned that navigation is particularly a problem especially in places that are uh, new unfamiliar and large uh, like an airport right so what we've honed in on is an app that will help the visually impaired really find their way through airports uh, by utilizing computer vision techniques and pathfinding algorithms uh, based on specific airport maps. So imagining Google Maps uh, in an airport specifically for the visually impaired and uh, specifically targeted towards their issues there. Application Tree is an app to help fight Zoom fatigue. And that's a relatively new term, relatively new issue for a relatively new world. And students and professionals alike are confined to a, you know, a small box on their screen, um, stuck all day in quarantine in their house, um, just uh, in constant meetings, calls, uh, and lectures. So we're still fleshing out what exactly we want the app to be, either through health and wellness uh, or something more towards the you know, habit-driven thing, or even something that you know, will provide more data analysis to help um, really shift the way that you do things uh, in your daily life. So we're envisioning something to do with uh, you know, maybe tracking through computer vision data analysis to really give people a little bit more insight into you know, what the days are like. Lastly, we're developing an app towards sustainability, and it's specifically trying to 
make people eat more local and seasonal foods. So everyone knows it's better, right, to purchase uh, food items that are local and seasonal. Uh, but you know, when you're going to a store, it's not really intuitive, or you, you don't really know how to tell what is local or what is seasonal. So we're thinking of a non-intrusive Chrome extension that will look at your shopping list uh, while you're putting it in and tell you, okay, this is something that's local, this is something that's seasonal, good job for selecting those. Or, um, you know, we see that you have apples here, but they're not really in season and you can switch them out for something like oranges, maybe for the recipe that you have. While tracking all of these changes that we could provide some kind of gratification or a rewarding system, just showing you that, uh, you know, this is the items that you purchased all of last week and your sustainability score is so much. And, you know, maybe compared to the other people in your area, you're doing very well. And the credit for fleshing out these ideas really go to the teams for you know brainstorming these ideas in the first place and specifically to the ux person in this last couple of weeks who worked hard to interview people and really find out what their apps would be doing and what problems they'd be solving within this niche space hello my name is eric holster i am a data scientist consultant from toronto canada my work typically involves a wide range of machine learning modeling, business intelligence analytics, and data engineering. And I sort of go into a company and fix whatever issues they're facing as they come up. And usually I do that on sort of a shorter length. So I've jumped between a lot of different companies dealing with critical issues that they've been facing. With CCA, I've been working on Project Nanite. Project Nanite is a word counter app that focuses on providing analytics and productivity for writers. Currently, coming from a data science background, it's been a bit of a departure from my usual work because this is more of a typical app building project uh, focused on software engineering and sort of building a tool that can help people from the ground up. Uh, with the help of our front end engineer, our UX designer and myself doing a lot of the back end work, we've been able to get a prototype up and running and now we're going to build the open source completed tool so that anybody who wants to use it can use it. Hey everyone, my name is Joey and I'm the UX mentor for CCA and my primary responsibilities are to assist and guide the UX person throughout every stage of the process. So things like user research, ideation, prototyping, usability testing. I'm really not attached to one single project team, rather I'm just there as like second opinion and a guide to help navigate these problems that the UX people face. Uh, and on the side, I am organizing workshops as well. And on the more administrative side of things, I'm helping out with strategy, operations, um, structure, organization, things like that. And hi again. I didn't even introduce myself. Well, my name is Tina, and I'm a data scientist at one of the FANG companies. I also have my own YouTube channel where I talk about tech, data science, software engineering, and just learning things in general. I'll be your host, and I'll be following the development of each of these projects and showcasing their progress. If CCA is something that you would be interested in as well, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel because we'll be posting updates here. In the meantime, feel free to check out our Notion page where there's more information about CCA, the past cohorts that we've run, as well as the projects that they've developed. All right, see you guys in the next video.